A very warm welcome to each and every one of you. Wherever you are, whatever time you're watching or listening to this podcast, welcome. I am very grateful for your attention and for you to be part of this community and for your continued support. This is Majesty Sussex Report and I'm Antonio. I am still in Guatemala and um, I must say I've been sick for the last three days almost now. It seems like I got some stomach issues problem and I can't blame anyone else other than myself. I was doing great and um, I decided at some point I was quite hungry and I was out and about and decided to just get some food off of a street vendor and then I went and got um, uh, also a juice um, off of a roadside juice maker (laughs) that was making juice. And I'll say the following day, I was just rolling in pain. And that's the only kind of um, place I can pinpoint that um, this has happened. So I've been taking some medication. Um, The pain is excruciating. And, um, but it is what it is. And um, hopefully with the medication that I was given, I will be um, better soon. I had the opportunity, because I was sick and, and still am, to actually be able to um, attend live one of uh, the Royal Sussex um, podcasts a few days ago. And it's always so great to be able to attend live and to see the community so alive and, and everyone interacting and commenting and and. It's so rich and barren, of course, it's always just extraordinary. And uh, I'll tell you, as I was listening and, and uh, it, 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 it got me thinking about maybe I should try once in a while to do, um, to do this podcast uh, live. And, but then I quickly sort of went, uh, maybe not because of all, all the pain I'm in, I kept going, I don't know if I could really do this um, live under these conditions and bravo to Baron that, that does it every single day, two, three hours. Um, so also I wanted to say thank you all for the great response on the GBC News uh, parody. I. I had so much fun putting that together, I will admit. And it, it, it was just so, I don't know, hilarious. And I am quite happy that so many of you um, responded so well to it. And um, based on that, I will say that um, we will likely see Mark D. Nightingale um, again, um, he is not putting up his ballet slippers anytime soon. Oh, sorry, his combat boots anytime soon. And um, also, uh, Camilla Nana Tomley, I think, um, you know, she has decided that she wants to concentrate more on politics and more serious quote unquote news. So maybe she will, <laughs> she will drop in once in a while. Um, However, you know, we will have our expert um, in California definitely come back. So thank you so much for that support. Today, I was reading um, an article that was published in Business Insider a little while ago. I think it was published last week or something earlier this week. I'm all foggy about when it was published. Mind you, I could just look it up right now, but... (laughs) I don't want to stop the recording because I edit these things and it takes so long to edit. I um, And I found the article quite in- interesting and I thought I would bring it to you folks also. So it it's all about, you know, Mary, 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 Marion. I, I, I can't pronounce that properly. Eh? Marion. Okay, you folks know what I mean. To marry a British um, 
um, prints. And it's, it's, I, th I thought it was a pretty balanced um, art article. So uh, let's, let's, let's get to it. Cost of Marion a British Prince. Kate Middleton, the Princess of Wales, is the latest in a long legacy of British royals to be mistreated by her own family. When will they learn? This is an article in Business Insider, and the analysis is by Samantha Grindle and Aneta Constantinidis. Images provided by Tim Graham from Getty Max. Mumbai by Indigo and Getty Tyler Lee from Bai. And it begins like this. Once upon a time, girls around the world grabbed their favorite tiaras and raced out of bed to see a great love story unfold. A handsome prince plucked a beautiful maiden from her humdrum life and decided she was worthy of being his wife. Her happily ever after was about to begin. This wasn't just a fairy tale. To millions, it appeared to be the reality for Princess Diana, Kate Middleton, and Meghan Markle. They were living the dream so many have had, marrying a prince. But as Kate's recent Photoshop controversy reveals, there is no happily ever after for a British princess. Bring in the fairy tale to life. Questions about why the British monarchy still exists escalate each year, but Diana, Kate, and Meghan, shimmering modern princesses, have helped the royals maintain relevance. When a dashing prince marries a regular girl, quote unquote regular girl, the royal wedding fantasy becomes a reality. People love the idea of a fairy tale being a real thing, royal commentator Christian Mazur said. They love that idea of a girl just being plucked from obscurity and being chosen by someone who could have his pick of, pick of the litter. He could date anyone he wanted. He could marry anybody, but he chose her. By making the fantasy the fairy tale feel real, the royal family appears far more accessible, and the British tabloids are more than happy to help. For instance, a 26 Daily Mail article praised Kate, whose parents were multimillionaires when she began dating William, as the coal miner daughter, in quotation with a dirt poor family past, in quotation, beca because of her great, 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 great grandfather's occupation. And while the tabloids eventually turned on Megan, they initially celebrated her for closing her car door or holding up umbrella over Prince Harry because she's just a regular woman, quotation. All three princesses were a boon to the monarchy's popularity. Diana and Charles' wedding was watched by 750 million people worldwide. After he said, I do, to Kate, William was praised by former British Prime Minister Sir John Mayer, who said the public saw him a, as a very human individual, quote-unquote. When Harry proposed to Meghan, outlets claimed their union would breathe new life into an ancient institution, quote-unquote. But, unlike fairy tales, their stories didn't end after the dream wedding. There's the beauty, the celebration, the joy, <laughs> the happiness. Maria Tartar 
a Harvard professor of folklore and fairy tales told Business Insider. And then, bang, you're back to once upon a time and all the terrible things that happened in once upon a time. Common roots become a vulnerability. With their smiling faces plastered over commemorative cups, the princesses are expected to uphold perfection. They're celebrated in the tabloids when they fit the perfect wife archetype, such as Diana and Kate stepping out just a day after giving birth, and punished when they rebel against it. Anytime a princess breaks royal protocol, quote unquote, it's deemed newsworthy. From Kate painting her nails to Diana's revenge dress, even Megan, who hasn't been a senior royal in four years, is still accused of breaking protocol. The model for Kate and Megan is even narrower than it was for Diana, as the media expect them to match the beloved people's princess. Countless articles praised the pair when they wore Diana's jewelry or mirror moments from her life. In his 2023 book, Endgame, royal expert Omid Scobie wrote that William and Kate were instructed to emulate Diana in public whenever possible, and staffers went to great lengths to style both Kate and Meghan in outfits that looked like hers. William and Harry watched their wives get picked apart by the tabloids whenever they deviated from Diana, yet she was also a prime target of their negative press. While the prince were hailed for foregoing blue-blooded brides, Kate and Meghan's upbringings were also used against them. As Kate became a fixture of the tabloids, so did the narrative that she had always set her sights on marrying up. The rags were happy to discuss how she and her sister Peppa were known as the Wisteria sisters, climbing the social ladder as fast as the invas invasive plant. Meanwhile, the tabloid's coverage of Megan's roots was marked with racist undertones. On one 2016 Daily Mail headline proclaimed she was almost straight out of Compton, while another story described her mother as a dreadlock African-American lady from the wrong side of the tracks. The insults have continued to follow Megan over the years, such as when a hacker redirected her foundation's website to a video of Kanye West singing Gold Digger. Meanster points out the Gold Digger stereotype presumes that the man has no free will. British tabloids have been pushing that story about Meghan and Harry since they stepped back from the royal family in January 2020. It was called Mexit. After all, the Duchess became manipulative Meghan and outlets reported she took total control of Harry's life. There's an undeniable power that comes with the monarchy's wealth, which was valued at 28 billion in 2021. But what must a princess give up in exchange for money and status? This is what happens when you fall in love with a prince. Tatar said, you, you trade in your voice. The cost of marrying a prince Life in the royal family requires a delicate dance of supporting the monarchy without stealing the spotlight from the crown or heir. In the 2022 Netflix docu docuseries Harry and Meghan, Meghan spoke of how she transformed her wardrobe and wore muted tones to blend in and avoid upsetting anyone else in the family. Likewise, in his 2023 memoir, Spare, Harry wrote that Charles and Camilla tried to make Kate born Catherine. 
change the spelling of her name because both of their names started with the letter C. He also said Charles pressed office berated William's PR team after Kate planned to visit a tennis club when Charles had a royal engagement. Kate wasn't the first princess to feel the wrath of the heir's jealousy. In her 1995 Panorama interview with BBC reporter Martin Bashir, Diana spoke of how the public's adoration, as illustrated by the couple's 1983 Australia tour, drove a wedge between them. With the media attention came a lot of jealousy, Diana recalled. A great deal of complicated situations arose because of that. Meghan and Harry's royal tour of Australia 35 years later stir up those same bitter feelings among the royal family. The prince recalled in Harry and Meghan. The issue is when someone who's marrying in, who should be a supporting act, is then stealing the limelight or is doing the job better than the person who was born to do this. It upsets people. It shifts the balance, Harry said. It wasn't long before the tabloid's narrative of Meghan, once called the Duchess of Success, started to turn. Silence is expected. When Meghan began dating Harry, she received one of her first mandates from the royal family, a motto long embraced by the monarchy, never complain never explain. I've advocated for so long for women to use their voice and then I was silent. Megan told Oprah Renfrey in 2021. The were you silent or silenced moment became one of the year's biggest memes but it's also a classic fairy tale trope. The passive princess reflects the genre's notably conservative nature, Tater said, pointing to princesses like Cinderella and Snow White. Meghan hoped to regain control of her narrative through her 2021 interview, but she is still relentlessly picked apart by the tabloids. British author Edwin Wayward pointed out that 16 articles were written about her by just one tabloid within 16 hours after news broke of Kate's cancer diagnosis. Diana suffered a similar fate following the release of her biography with Andrew Morton and her BBC interview. As British journalist Robert Hartman told Vanity Fair in 1998, The princess thought sharing her story would earn her favor with the press. Instead, it boomeranged. Because she took agency of her story, royal reporters like Pierce Morgan thought Diana had no right to claim privacy. Morgan uses the same argument in his frequent criticism of Meghan and Harry. You You can look at Meghan and say she was a victim of the royal family and the monarchy and and of racism. And you can also say she's somebody who took control of her life. Tater said to Business Insider. But then that can be turned into, oh, she's manipulative. Princesses are set up to fail. If a perfect princess should be seen and not heard, her disappearance can throw the entire system haywire, as evidenced by the controversy surrounding Kate's withdrawal from the public eye in January. Speculation peaked when Kate and William released a digitally altered photo of the princess with her children amid her absence. Only Kate took the blame for the editing, the shot, though it had been originally credited to William. 
forcing her to deal with the bad press alone. And when she announced her cancer diagnosis, the following week, Kate was on her own once again, sharing the news by herself on a park bench. It, uh, it brought up memories of how Diana was treated. Maisner said to Business Insider, it seemed to be another moment of, well, she has to put out another explanation for herself and he gets to sit this one out. Some social media users also noted that Kate's announcement was the first time they had heard her voice. The perfect princess, quote unquote, who never stole the spotlight, had suddenly been thrust into to answer for the monarchy's bad publicity. The great irony of the royal family turning Kate into a scapegoat is that she is among their greatest assets, as were Diana and Meghan. For years, the root of William's popularity has revolved around his relationship with Kate, from their wedding to their children. And before he was Kate's husband, the public fell in love with William because he was Diana's son. More often than not, the princesses marrying into the royal family earn the public's loyalty and love, but those born into the monarchy. Sorry. Let's read that again. More often than not, the princesses marrying into the royal family earn the public loyalty and love, not those born into the monarchy. Yet, the royals never seem to learn their lesson. Repeating a cycle of blame that, in part, led Diana and Meghan to leave the monarchy altogether. Even if you try to escape, one doesn't just stop being a princess. The title and all the attention that comes with it follows you for life. It's probably why fairy tales end after... Happily ever after. My commentary. The focus on the fairy tale narrative juxtaposed with the harsh realities that Diana, Kate, and Megan faced underlines the pressure and expectations faced on these women by the media, public, and the monarchy itself. The article also highlights how stories and images are manipulated to fit a desired narrative. Often, at the expense of the princess's autonomy and well-being. The tale of the British monarchy is often sold as a dream, common women turning into beloved princesses overnight. However, the reality unveils a narrative far grimmer, marred by relentless scrutiny and unrealistic expectations. These women Projected as modern-day fairy tale princesses have indeed helped maintain the relevance of an ancient institution. Yet their stories highlight a disturbing pattern of mistreatment and a severe lack of support within the royal family. A poignant example is the relationship between Kate and Megan. Initially, Kate was portrayed as a coal miner's girl an image crafted to endear her to the public. Similarly, Megan's entrance was celebrated, yet soon, very soon, (laughs) the narrative turned vile, marked by racist undertones and unfounded accusations. One might have hoped that Kate, understanding the weight of such public scrutiny, would stand with Megan, offering support against the relentless media attacks. (laughs) Unfortunately, instead of joining forces against an institution steeped in outdated traditions and sexism, it appears that jealousy and the institution's deep-rooted influence turned them into adversaries, not allies. 
And for that, we can point the finger at one person. Kate. This not only perpetuated the cycle of abuse, but also squandered a significant opportunity. I mean, together they, they, they could have championed a reform within the monarchy, advocating for a modern approach of royal life that respects and protects its, 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 um, its, its women. The, the royal family valued at over 28 billion. Let me say that again. 28 billion continues to resist modernization, insisting on a conformist and silent image for its princesses. They are expected to perform their roles without Aaron under the 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 under the the the, the constant s surveillance of a critical public and a voracious, mean-spirited media. We saw this with Diana, whose popularity and um, candidness brought jealousy and strife within the royal household. Years later, Meghan faced similar challenges, which ultimately led her and Prince Harry to step back from royal duties. A move that speaks volumes about the unchanging and unforgiving nature of the monarchy. Meghan's plea for voice and respect went unhinged, leading to her decision to claim her narrative outside the royal constraints. This move, criticized yet bold, underscore a critical message. Systemic change within the royal family is long, long overdue. As these women's stories unfold, they, they unveil not just personal trials, but a systemic issue within the British monarchy. An institution clinging to archaic norms at the cost of its most visible members well-being it, it it is it is high time that that the monarchy learns from its past embracing change that fosters support and solidarity among its women rather than isolation and competition <sighs> but you know what i, I, I don't <laughs> mean to laugh but I don't see it anytime soon coming because if the disappearance non-disappearance cancer diagnostic hospital stay not hospital stay Photoshop not Photoshop AI video not AI video has anything to show is that they keep looking at the same playbook and trying to pull a fast one over all of us. The difference is that today we are a little bit wiser. We understand a little bit more the tricks of the trade. And there's an army of people who are not willing just to accept everything at face value because we are critical thinkers once again thank you for tuning in <laughs> and um, hope you enjoyed it and I thought it was a, quite an interesting article and hope uh, my reflection and commentary was was part of you know your thought process too uh, it's it's just just over and over i think we all see how easily this could all be solved and unraveled in a way that would benefit this antiquated institution and would actually encourage its survival and it could be striving rather than, you know, kind of wobbling. 
But once again, who knows what the British people will do. Um, at the end of the day, this is the British monarchy, not the American or the Canadian or any other. It's the British monarchy. And <sighs> what members of parliament and all those institutions that sort of keep the monarchy alive and well, let's see what will happen. Again, it always comes down, I think, to the people. People don't realize the power that they've got, and let's hope they do at some point or another. If the people keep not supporting it, if this whole republic um, movement succeeds a little bit, who knows? And the story continues on. <laughs>